Hello everyone, this is CY once again. Today's episode is about uh, the third installment of the DF64101 series. But before that, I would like to introduce to you my new addition to the family. Uh, I have acquired uh, the La Pavoni. I think this is the Strati Stratibari, right? From a friend, uh, from a very good friend called, uh, his name is Jensen. So I actually bought this from him. And uh, this La Pavoni uh, uh, Lima machine is actually in great shape. Uh, I think this is the post millennium, uh, millennium uh, edition, which is around 2000. Uh, okay, I, I think I got to get the exact date for this machine, uh, so I'll find it out. Uh, so today, the first part, I'll be pulling a shot on the La Pavoni, and then we'll move on to talk about um, when you should clean up your DF64. So let's get started. So this is our main actor today and we are going to use the DF64. Actually this is the uh, standard uh, standard steel bro set, right? It's the stock one. There's no modification to the bro set or there's no upgrade and uh, currently I'm using the version 2 declumper uh, plus a PVC flap on this grinder. And this, of course, this is the latest addition to the power filter adapter, which I'm going to show you how it works. And the most important thing about the La Pavoni, I believe, is temperature management. And hence, therefore, uh, you can see that uh, my friend Jensen has actually helped me put on an aluminum conductor tape. And inside, there's actually another aluminum sleeve. And this is to ensure that uh, the, the, the temperature is red uh, as quick as accurately as possible and you can see that this is actually connected to a thermocouple which is directly above and from this um, thermocouple I actually can I can read easily the temperature of the group head and uh, instead of reading on the sticker so this is actually uh, the kind of setup that was taught to me by Jensen so I would like to shout out to Jensen right uh, thank you for teaching me all these uh, great techniques on the use on the use of the La Pavoni. Right, so today I'm just going to dial in. Uh, I, I will try to dial in the shots using the La Pavoni. So let's get started. So, first of all, uh, I would like to increase the temperature of my group head to around 90 degrees Celsius. And uh, my good friend Jensen told me that instead of using a wet flush, so right now you can see the temperature is about 47 point, 40, uh, 84 point seven degrees Celsius. And what you can do to increase the temperature without flushing or wasting water, right, is actually to do something like a, a dry flush. So let me go, let me show you. So remember always to hold uh, the non metal parts of the machine because the rest of the metal parts is extremely hot and this is hotter than the E61 group head so be careful all the surrounding hills are extremely hot uh, even the wood now I can feel that it's pretty warm right so now I'm going to increase the temperature of the group head to about 90 degrees celsius so basically you just have to lift up and don't do not lift up all the way and then you let go right by doing this action right you are actually increasing the temperature of the group head Again, I have to give a shout out to Jensen who has taught me this method. So right now, the temperature has risen to about 89 degrees Celsius and it will continue to rise up. So you just have to give it a few pump and you'll be okay. So right now, the temperature is about 89 point... Okay, it's reaching about 90 degrees Celsius. So I think that would be the perfect temperature for me to pull a shot today. So... Right now, let's grind some coffee beans. I'm using the coffee beans from Cafe Metella Roma, which is roasted in Italy. Right? I know it's not um, exactly that fresh, but the coffee still tastes very, very good. I'm going to use about 15 grams. Okay, I think 40 grams will do today. Right, and my current grind setting on my DF64 with a standard Itamio burr is actually at 12. 
and I, I love this plastic cover uh, from uh, Fredo Chips. And you can see that I have this adapter, right, which is actually a very convenient uh, modification you can have. Right, and it fits on the niche cup. And what it does is it can bring the cup tilted and very close to the exit chute of the DF64. And now you are hands free. You can now just activate the button. Right, it's about 13.8 so it retains about 0.2 gram which is pretty okay so right now I have to get out my portal filter and uh, portal filter has been sitting in there for quite some time and it's now very very warm I have to design something that fits the size of the La Pavoni uh, portal filter uh, this is a naked portal filter or bottomless uh, it's really very cute. I, I like the uh, small handle and This basket can actually take up to 16 or even 17 grams The issue is uh, Right now I, without the proper dosing uh, dosing dosing funnel uh, It will be very easy for me to spill. So right now. I'm just going to try to dose inside I have just passed my WDD tools to uh, a customer of mine, so I'm just going to use a simple one to sort of disturb the part. Uh, this is not the right tool, but that's the best I can have now. Uh, I don't really have a, a acupuncture needle with me right now, so this will probably not be the best extraction. And the Rappavoni comes with the one that I purchased comes with a very hefty uh, temper. Uh, this is really very solid. You can see uh, it even have a Rappavoni uh, logo there. It's pretty neat. I think it's a sticker or some sort. Oh no, I think it's laser edge on it. Okay, not the best part preparation, but I think that will be good for today. Okay, let me bring you closer to see how the extraction is. Uh, I will not be using any weighing scale. I will just be uh, pulling a shot and this is how the shot quality looks like. Now the temperature is about 88 degrees Celsius, so I'm going to just going to lift up the handle. Allow the water to start dripping through. I will give you about 10 seconds of pre-infusion. And I will start to pull the lever down.
I'm pretty new to La Pavoni, so I'm sure there's a way to sort of control the issue of the bubbling over there. Uh, so for the masters of pa La Pavoni, please leave your comment in the in the comment section down below and let me know how I can actually improve my shot. So just now was a pretty quick one on. Uh, I think this is my third attempt in pulling a shot on the La Pavoni. Um, I'm really having a lot of fun in this uh, espresso machine, especially the manual lever style because I have to really control so many different factors such as the temperature, such as uh, the pressure I'm going to exert and you can see this is actually not a professional edition and hence therefore it doesn't come with the steam gauge, steam, pre uh, steam uh, pressure gauge as well as the brew pressure, uh, pressure gauge. I have ordered one from Romania and uh, I'm supposed to receive it by tomorrow so if I can tomorrow I'll make another video around this time to show you um, the package to receive from uh, uh, online shop in Romania whereby they make the pressure profiling kit and I believe uh, the pressure profiling kit doesn't fit this curved lever which means that I have to remove this curved lever and train to uh, the straight one but let's see how it goes I may not even install it because uh, I, I like the curved lever here so let's see how it goes tomorrow and let's move on to the second part of uh, today's agenda is actually uh, how or how do you know when you need to uh, service your uh, DF64 I think a very good way to know when you need to service your uh, or clean up your DF64 is when you bellow right uh, normally when you bellow right you will feel if you are still using the stock silicon, uh, thin silicon um, sleeve, uh, when you try to bellow, you should feel the pressure, and there sh you should have a feeling when when you press a few times, and you suddenly feel that the coffee ground get pushed out suddenly, and you and suddenly there's a uh, something like an explosion of the coffee ground being deposited into the dosing cup, so. Uh, if you are able to achieve that on a regular basis, then I would say that you do not have to really open up your grinder and clean up the grinder inside. Uh, because if you are able to bellow up most of the coffee ground, right, there should be, uh, they, there's going to be a little bit of a coffee ground deposit the inside is very normal. And if you are able to push out most of the coffee ground, then you, should, you shouldn't have to worry too much about uh, servicing or cleaning up your grinder. However, uh, if you start to feel the resistance and when you try to bellow out uh, the coffee ground that's stuck inside and no matter how much you try and it, uh, it doesn't seem to come out and uh, I think the best way to check is actually to check for your retention. If your retention is within 0.5 gram, I would say that it's pretty good. But if your retention goes up to 1 gram or even more and then that is a good sign that you should open up your grinder and start to do a uh, housekeeping and oh, it's always convenient to have a handheld vacuum cleaner or um, a, a, a short vacuum uh, a short vac uh, is very convenient I think handheld vacuum cleaner is really uh, very convenient so I have one too and uh, just vacuum out and if you can have a brush to brush out all the uh, coffee ground that's stuck uh, around the burr and that will actually solve the problem uh, so after that, when you screw back the collar, please be very careful because the warranty of the grinder doesn't cover um, uh, when you try to open up the grinder by yourself. When you screw in the thread, make sure that the scrap is not uh, damaged. If the, scrap, uh, if the thread on the grinder body is damaged, there's no way that it can be repaired and the whole grinder has to be changed. And this will be not bad by the person who sells it to you. Uh, you have to bear your, the cost, right? And in fact, uh, for us distributor, if you are coming back and uh, to ask that the thread is damaged, we will ask you to purchase a new one because there's no way that the body of the um, grinder and the screw thread around the collar side can be repaired. So please be careful, right? When you try to open or screw back the collar. So um, I think that's all I have for you today. And the next section, I'm going to talk about um, should you do a bird upgrade um, and uh, is the SSP bird really um, 
uh, makes so much difference and what's the difference between the taste profile given by the SSP uh, Espresso and SFC Multipurpose. Uh, we are now having um, these two process to compare and very soon we'll have the Unimodal uh, version coming very soon. In fact, um, we got the reply from SSP Korea, uh, the SSC grinding solution. They told us that the, the SSP Multipurpose and the SSP Brew which is the unimodal one is almost the same right the only difference is the slight difference at the, at the outer edge of the grinder right i think the multi-purpose one is able to allow some a small fraction of a fine so that it allows you to brew the espresso to give you more body uh, to the coffee or the espresso that you extracted so i believe that and other than that the geometry of the entire process is almost at the identical hence therefore um, I, I will test out the uh, SSP Brew, which is a new model one, and compare with the SSP Multipurpose to see whether there's actually much difference between the two. And my stock should be arriving very soon. Uh, and once once I get it, I will definitely do a test to show you guys uh, is there any differences between the two. And one more thing, uh, I get this question quite a lot. Is it worth upgrading to titanium coated burr sets? Uh, my answer to that is, uh, I, I don't think you should bother about upgrading your stainless steel tamil to titanium because the entire geometry of the two burr set the titanium one and the stock one which is the stainless steel one they are exactly the same the geometry of the plates are exactly the same uh, there's only an additional coating on the stainless steel tamil to make it last longer which means the titanium coating doesn't really improve the taste profile of your coffee but it only um, probably lengthen or make your burr set last longer and uh, I think if you are going for upgrade, I think you should just jump straight to the SSP burr and skip the titanium, right? Don't bother buying the titanium burr set, right? It's just not worth it. Uh, so, uh, but that's my personal opinion, right? Uh, if you wish to do so, right, um, you can still try it out. But in my personal experience, there's not much improvement over the taste because before I upgrade my SSP, uh, to my SSP multipurpose, I'm actually using the titanium, and between the titanium and the stand, uh, standard Itamil, there's no taste difference at all. So thank you for watching today, and this is uh, the third installment of the DF64101. Right, I hope you have enjoyed uh, the journey with me, with all the uh, modification where I made to try to improve the grinder. I hope to this is not too bothersome to you. And don't worry about all this mod, I have to say that the DF64 is a good grinder and once you open the grinder, you just need to check your zero point and you're good to go, right? You don't need all this modification to uh, make a good cup of coffee, but this modification does uh, enhance the user experience in that manner, right? For example, the, 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 the grind indicator, I think this is really important, right? The anti popcorn will probably reduce your grinding time. Uh, quite significantly for example i think if i install the anti popcorn i can grind within 10 seconds which is pretty good and uh, so i think that mod is actually pretty good and uh, i also have the 10 degree tube base uh, and that's another mod which i i feel it, it, it does give me a better performance because with the 10 degree tube base i never have any choking of my burr set and my burr has not been cleaned for a long time and doesn't require cleaning as you can see when i bellow out uh, the coffee ground just come out easily, right? There's no signs of chokage and it doesn't have the sudden burst of the coffee ground that suddenly come out because I've replaced the original silicone with uh, my own version, which is a version 2 declumper and the PVC flat. So I think that works so far uh, very well for me. On my DR grinder, I have it with uh, version 2 of my declumper plus a very thin layer of silicone. I believe Thomas has passed me that thin layer of silicone material, which we actually bought. I think I believe he bought it from Daiso, so it's those kind of silicone floor or uh, table mat, right? If you are if you are going to Daiso, you can actually check the material. That material is actually softer than the stock silicone material, and I think when you try to bellow out the coffee ground, it will give you it will be easier for you to blow out, uh, and there will be less resistance. Hence, I believe they will lead to less retention. So thank you for watching today and uh, the COVID-19 situation is still not very clear. Remember, um, stay safe and let's keep making good coffee and have fun.